Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Jersey, and welcome to my channel. Yes, we are back with some more version 1 content for you here in Stormix. Now in this video, we're going to be having a look at the brand new remote control unit handheld item that we have here in version 1. We're going to go through it, kind of show you how to actually use it and how you can set up in one of your own creations. And we're actually going to test it on two different vehicles here in Stormix. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button and remember the little bell icon to be notified for my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So we're back here in the world of Stormworks in version one, and we're going to be taking a look at the new handheld remote controller. Now with this new handheld remote controller add-on that we got, this actually enabled us to do a lot of really cool things here in Stormworks. The possibilities are pretty much endless on what you can do with them. Now the handheld controller works pretty basically. You need to obviously have it in your inventory and you can see here that we can go and have a look at it. We can press the B button to actually cycle the frequency at which it transmits out at. It goes all the way from zero up to nine. So anything that you are controlling, whether it's a crane or a car or vehicle, it needs to have a frequency from zero to nine. Now you'll notice here that if I switch over to frequency number three, and I do a left click, which enables this controller, it pretty much acts as a seat. Now you can see I've already hooked up a little radio over here to this little car that I have, and I can actually go and drive it pretty simple, quite straightforward, as you can see. Now, this is a very rudimentary example of what you can do with this. Uh, another cool thing with this is I can actually turn it off. I can carry on moving and I can switch it to channel two, for example. And you'll now notice that I can go and control my crane over here, which is pretty cool too. So you get endless opportunities with this new remote controller. And once again, as I said, it's quite easy to actually figure out how it works. Now it requires a little bit of logic, so I'm going to show you how to actually go and get that sorted out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off here. We're going to go and delete my Mac controller that I was working on. And we're going to create a brand new Mac controller for our example. We're going to go and click on the new Mac controller button. And this time around, I'm going to call it, let's say, uh, remote video. Okay. There we go. I've called it remote video. Now, the size of it is up to you. You can add as many different controls on this as you want or as little controls as you want. Once again, as I said, it's up to you. For example, we're going to go with a two by three mic controller. We're gonna go and switch over to the logic and we're gonna start adding our logic on. The first thing we want to want is going to be a composite in. That's gonna come from our radio and it's gonna to go to our actual vehicle itself or to our crane. The next thing we want is going to be a number output and that's going to be allowing us to actually change the signal frequency, okay? Along with that, you're also going to need your actual controls. So for example, we'll need W and S. We will also need our A and D. And um, for my example, I'm going to have a um, number one and I'm going to have a number two because you can also output that hotkeys also, which are just on and off nodes. We're gonna go and make this a number, a number, and we're gonna put it output. And then when we come down to the one and two, we're just gonna make them output also. We're gonna spread that across our actual mic controller. As you can see, it just fits in my mic controller. We can then switch over to the logic. I'm just gonna go and move this around so it's nice and easy to see what we're actually gonna be doing. And once we have that, we're then going to now and go and read the composite and convert it into number and on offs. To do that, we can scroll down. You can see we have a composite read number and a composite read on off. We can do the on off, add two of them here, and we can go and get the number and we can add two of them here. Once we have that, the next thing we want to do is obviously do our signal. So let's go and find our signal, which is over here. We're going to use a constant number and I'm gonna say that for this mic controller, it's gonna be signal number four. Okay, so that's what's gonna tell it to read on channel four. We're then going to get our composite and connect it up to all of our readers. And then we can go in and see, okay, well, this is number two. So I'm going to put this on channel number two. This is going to be channel number one. So I'm going to leave it on channel number one. And then I can go down and connect these two. I know that my A and D is channel number one. So I'm going to make sure it's number one and we're going to get connected. And I know that my WS is number two. Okay. If you're ever confused on what numbers it actually works on, just grab a seat and hover over it and it'll actually tell you what numbers you can read on. 
Once we've got this, we can go and save it. So I'm going to call it my remote video. I can close this off and I'm going to go and get it and I'm going to place it on my creation. Now, what we're going to do for our example right now is I'm going to get some dials. Okay. I'm going to get two dials so we can actually read the numbers and we can kind of do example here. And I'm going to get two lights just to make sure that everything is actually working. So we're going to say that this one is going to be our W and S and this one is going to be on our AD. This one will be one and this one will be two. We of course can go and get everything connected. So one from our microcontroller over to the light switch, two over to the light switch, A and D over to our A and D, and we can get the WNS over to our WNS. Our signal can go over to our little radio. We can make sure we have our electric connected. And lastly, we're going to connect our composite from our radio into our actual microcontroller. We can then go and spawn that in and we can now go and test it. Make sure that you set your radio frequency to the right frequency. I know that this one's at frequency number four. And I can go and click my remote controller. And you'll notice now if I press one, the light goes on. If I press two, the light goes on. If I press W, you can see this is moving forwards and it moves backwards. If I do left and right, it goes and moves left and right. Okay, so it's reading the signals from this mic controller and also from the actual remote control. Well, how do we get this connected up to a crane or a vehicle, for example? Well, it works in two different ways. By default, the remote controller works as a push button, okay, in theory for your controls. It is not sticky. So for example, if we were to connect this directly up to my crane, so if I do W and S to, let's say, the up and down of my crane, and let's do the A and D to the rotate, if I go and connect that up now, you will notice that it goes and it constantly moves it okay and you see it goes back to its starting position it doesn't stick at its position there it's not a sticky number okay it's a reset so we need some way of making it sticky now unfortunately there is no option on the remote controller to make it sticky as it is right now while it's uh, resetting it's perfect for a car okay because you don't want it to always be going forward always turning left you only want it to do that when you push the button so making it reset is perfect but for a crane not so good so to actually change that you can simply go back into the microcontroller for your actual crane itself and we're going to add a few different things here so we're going to go and make a little bit of space and i'm going to go and disconnect wns and disconnect the a and d the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some threshold gates. I'm going to get four threshold gates. And you can go and set these now to pretty much anything you want. But what we want is we want one to read if it's negative. So we're going to go from negative one to let's do negative 0.5. Well, actually, let's do 0.4. And then we're going to the positive. We're going to do the same thing. So 0.4 and one. And we're going to repeat the same process for the second batch. So minus one and minus 0 0.4 and then 0.4 to one. Okay. We're going to get those connected up to the numbers that we're reading. And we're going to go and simply use an up and down. Okay. So what it's doing is it's reading the value and saying, okay, if you're above 0 0.3, go and move it up. If you're below 0 0.3 or negative 0 0.3, you're going to move it down and so on and so forth. So we're going to get those connected up. Okay. And then you're going to go onto your up and down, and this is where you can configure it. You can set a clamp if you want to. We're not going to do it for our example. And we're going to put the increments as 0.05. Okay. You can change this as much as you want to adjust your sensitivity. So if you want more sensitivity, increase this. If you want less sensitivity, decrease this. We're going to go into our second up and down, do the same thing. And now we're just going to go and simply connect to our A and D. Okay. We're going to connect to our A and D here. We can then click on the update button. We can then go and make sure everything is still connected and we can go and spawn this in. I'm going to go move over to the crane here so you can see a better example. So before what was happening is it was always resetting to its starting position. So I'm going to click and open it now. Let's use the up and down. Okay. And you can see it is moving up and down, but this is moving way too quickly for us. Okay. Really, really too quick. So we can go back into it. We can adjust one of two things. We can either adjust the speed at which this rotates at, okay? Or we can go into the microcontroller and adjust the speed at which it does on the up and down. 
Let's just stick with these two and let's see what difference that makes. So we're going to enable the controller again. Let's have a look. Okay, so that is still a little bit too quick for my liking. So I'm going to go back into my mic controller and I'm going to adjust the sensitivity. All I have to do is go to my up and down and I'm going to change this. So let's make it a 0 0.01. Okay, so we now have adjusting on that. We're going to go and click on update again. Click on spawn. We can now move over to our creation and let's see if it's a little bit less sensitive. Perfect. There we go. You can see I can move it down and I can keep on moving down and up. I can move it left and right as I need to. And as I said, you can adjust the sensitivity as much as you want to. Okay. We can even use the up and down to move that winch up and down. So how about this? Let's go back in. We're going to use the one and two to actually move the winch. So one is going to go to bring it down and two is going to bring it up. Let's spawn in again. We're going to run over to our creation. Let's go and use it. Let's go and move the crane a bit. Just get the winch to move the rope down. And then let's go and press the one button. That brings the actual winch down. Okay. And two will bring the winch up. Okay. And you can see the winch is now going up. If I stop it, I can press one and it's going to drop down. Okay. You can once again change the sensitivity on your actual winch itself. So that's how you use the little radio remote controller. I think it's a really cool thing, like controlling your cranes on the back of your trucks or maybe on the back of your ship, or even driving up to a port and controlling the crane that refuels your, your boat. I think these are really cool and I can't wait to see what people are going to be creating with this remote control unit. I would like to see some changes to it, possibly a setting on it where you can change it from either sticky to a uh, reset. I would love to see some type of way of changing that, but of course at the moment there isn't. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a really cool thing. But once again, guys, I would love to hear your comments in the video description below. Let me know what you think of this new remote control unit. Are you going to be using it in your creations? Are you not? As always, love to hear your comments, but I hope you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.